Welcome to this part one of a new video series about Vuex, in which you will learn the core concepts of the framework. In part two, I will code a real-world example using Vuex in Framework 7 for you to follow along. I've been struggling a lot in the past getting my head around frameworks like Redux and Vuex. They seemed so overly complicated and unnecessary, but after a while it clicked and today I'd like to share my knowledge about global state management with you. Vuex introduces the concept of a global store to view, which is actually not that new. Even I had been using a similar ID over the past years by simply defining a variable called store, which contains all the data for my app. Coming from a Java background, I also like to use setters and getters, which grant access to the store's data. Now, Vuex basically takes a very similar concept and implements it into a framework. It's just that setters are called mutators, while getters are still called, well, getters. So in fact, I had been using the exact same concept that Vuex introduces to Vue. Before I start to explain, keep in mind that frameworks like Redux or Vuex are meant for big projects with many team members because it helps to keep all the apps stable in one global object instead of having them cluttered all over the place within different components. However, if you're just creating a small app, then you probably won't need this. If you're still interested, Let's have a look at the most basic example of a Vuex store. This code snippet initializes the store with an empty array of to-do items. In order to add a to-do, we need to define a setter, also known as a mutator. In order to read a value, we simply define a getter. And that's pretty much it. For calling these methods from components, we can use store.getters.getToDo's and store.commit. Now, there's one more thing about Vuex that confuses most people when they try it for the first time, which are actions. Actions basically act as a wrapper method for mutators, which means that components call actions and actions call mutators. Now, this seems overly complicated, but for the moment it is enough to simply understand that in order to modify state from within the component, you simply call store.dispatch and pass in the name of the setter. The reason why actions are required is that mutators must always be asynchronous for debugging reasons, but sometimes you might have to do an asynchronous call, for example if you're using a remote API. In this case, you would do the asynchronous call from within an action, which then calls mutators in a synchronous way. In order to understand this better, watch my next video, in which I will code a real-life example using Vuex and Framework 7. So, thanks for watching. If the video was helpful to you, please like it and subscribe for more content. And see you in the next video.